Sonbrist with Dakota Fiber Mill. And I'm Teresa Perleberg with Bear Creek Felting and together we're Shepherd Industries. And we're going to share what we've been working on and our next projects and um, information about what's going on with our school. And if you are just tuning in for the first time, we're renovating an old school that was built in 1916 and turning it into a fiber arts retreat center. And today we have plans to share with you. So if you stick around till the end, we're going to show you our plans for the school. So first of all, we'll start with the project I've been working on. And if you saw our last YouTube, you would have seen the progress. So this is the cow, a Hereford cow that I've been needle felting. Uh, she still needs ears. It's a tail and I'm still working on her udder and probably will add more to her body and things as I go. But she's been a, a long time work in progress here. Can't wait to get done. So hopefully by next week you'll have a, we'll have a finished Hereford for you to see. It's amazing and it's rock hard. It's just amazing. Yeah, I kind of so, finished her, so her feet, face, face features. Amazing! It's like she, is, she should start chewing her cud. Which is fun. When I get their, their faces done, it's, it's really, I get anxious to get done all the way. So. Mm -hmm. Alright! And then we've been working on <clears throat> these, um, we sell these needle felting tools. Uh, this one has six needles that it holds. And I saw these on my website, Bear Creek Felting. And this is the single needle holder. And these have been my favorite. I've tried all kinds of needle holders and these are my, the most comfortable to use and the easiest to change the needles out. And what I recommend. And this little piece of rubber. The little piece of rubber is, is what holds the needles in there. Oh, Plus it? it. Oh. Yeah, if you move that, that's how you get the needle oh, out. Really? Oh. So you remove that, and then that's how the needle. Oh my gosh. So then, you know, needles wear out when you're felting, so this just pulls out. That's awesome. And you put the new one in. Plus that little rubber. Well, it, it, it makes it so much easier to, to yeah. felt with it. The rubber piece is nice to hold. And it's good weight, too. It's got some weight mm -hmm. to it. So it's yeah. And they're nice and smooth feeling. So. And yeah. then, so awesome. we came up with some holders for them because they're sharp. I have found that when I'm throwing everything in a bag and I want to take it somewhere, you can't just throw the needles and these needle holders into a bag. Mm -hmm. They're and just this, gonna poke yeah, out. This, this, this you particular might have to one, hold it up. Yeah. Oh, this particular one would probably hold, this holds the, the multi-tool and the single and for sure another single if not even another. But yeah. like you say, the, the, major, the most that you use are, are the three. That's what I so. use. I, I have two different colors of these singles. So you can have a silver one and a red one, and then you can have two different colors of, for the different size needles that you have, and then you carry them all in this little mm -hmm. pouch. And it keeps them it's safe leather. from- It's pretty strong yeah, leather, yeah. Keep them safe from breaking, and then it's not going to poke out the side of your bag. Mm -hmm. So they've got the felt covers here, and then the leather to store them in. They could even embellish on these. They could felt directly on yes, these. Yes, you could they make your own make design. Them. That would be adorable. You'll see. Yes. I'll have to do some of that maybe for next week. Oh. Make a little design on there. there and see. Or embroider. Oh. You could embroider on there. Yeah. That would be cute too. Mm -hmm. So these will be available for sale on bearcreekfelting.com. Mm -hmm. and $20. $20 for these cases. And we're going to have two different sizes. Mm -hmm. This is the first size that we have. Well, we should have by next week. Awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the next size. It'll be, it'll be a little smaller just to hold the two singles. Yeah. yeah. Just in case. We'll see what everybody's interested in mm -hmm. and go from there. Yes. So we have those and they're all going to be different colors because, you know, the, they're all kind of one of the kinds, which is kind of neat. So there we go. All right. At the end, we're going to be drawing for the, the prize that we mentioned last in our last YouTube, and we're going to have a new prize for next time. So if you have questions, or if you just want to comment uh, below this video, then you'll get put into the drawing for the prize for next week. And that is going to be uh, like a fall felting bundle. So it'll be the uh, turkey needle felting kit, uh, the pumpkin needle felting kit, and then wool to make three extra pumpkins. So you'd be set for your fall decorations. 
So all you have to do to be put in the drawing for that is comment, ask a question underneath this video in the comment section, and you'll be put in the drawing. So and that brings us to our comments. I'm going to take the first one. The gal has a afghan that she has, and it's pink. It's made out of wool. She doesn't like pink, and she wanted some help as far as how to dye it and repurpose the yarn. Um, to me, it sounded like she her intention was to take the afghan apart and then use the yarn for a different project, um, which you know some folks do, which is great. But I think in her in in her situation to, to over dye that into a different color it would probably be easiest to do it in the afghan form and i would use um, a cushing's dye and that's c-u-s-h-i-n-g-s -S, and it comes in a little packet and and it, it's just it's, it's called an acid dye you just do it in a hot water bath and you use vinegar as the mordant, and that's the mordant is what sets the dye into the into the fiber. And or she could use jacquard. That's another um, good one. Or and I'll put in yep. down below this video. I'll put links to where you can buy yes. buy those yep. dyes. Or gay wool dyes, or greener shades. Um, any any of those dyes. I mean, even rip dye, um, mm -hmm. Kool Aid. You know, if if if, if you really wanted to experiment would, would work out great and you, she, you could do something you could make it um, a couple different colors you could dye dye it three different colors you could even hand paint it with a, with a brush and with a, a foam brush which would be kind of fun but and then that when, when you took it apart to, to repurpose that yarn then you would have like a variegated yarn of different colors so there's lots of fun things that that you could do it and absolutely you can can re-dye that to, to repurpose that yarn or you might even decide you like the afghan a different color and what have you so yeah mm -hmm. is mine next uh sure so someone asked how i how it is to felt with alpaca and i normally uh just felt with romney um, that's my favorite but i do use alpaca i use the surrey alpaca for for adding hair to animals but I do, and it's it's more it's more like hair, so it doesn't felt as as well as the Romney. But I um, will put it on, and then I'll felt over it with the Romney to hold it in place. But it's you actually know, has to reason. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's actually like hair. So it, so if you want to have long hair on your animals, maybe you want some. Money. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yes. No, she doesn't. Want so the and the other mm -hmm. is. What is it called? Wakaya. Wakaya. Yep. Um, I I don't know. I don't like felting it with a well felt. Mm -hmm. Especially this this would would felt better because you can see the crimping. This has yeah. has a, has a little bit of memory in it. And, mm -hmm. I mean, it's very possible to felt with it. It's just not my preferred choice, but yeah, definitely can. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, another gal wanted to to know um, what to blend with alpaca wool. Say you want to knit a sweater or something that you want it to hold its shape over over the lifetime of, of, of that article of clothing or what have you. Um, what type of wool to blend in and at what percent to blend in to give that alpaca a real good memory base. Um, especially if you're, if you're using the Surrey alpaca, because the Surrey alpaca um, is so silky soft. It's, it's really super soft and, and it's really shiny. It has beautiful luster. But if you made a, a sweater or something that you wanted to keep its shape, it just grows because it's got nothing to spring it back into, into, into shape. It's got no memory. So when you make something, memory brings it back to the original form that it was. So I usually, with Surrey alpaca, I usually blend in at least 40% of a wool, whether that is, if it's a real fine, super soft uh, Surrey alpaca, I'll use a Coradale or a Romney, Coopworth. Um, it doesn't have to be a finer grade of wool, just it, it would make a beautiful yarn, but that, that memory, that wool would give it some memory. Um, 
if if the the surrey alpaca is, is coarser and you wanted to soften it up too um, you could use a finer wool like cormo merino um, cvm targi any of those finer breeds that that really can have a lot of spring to them and and with uh, so so with the, the surrey i use a, a, about probably 40 percent now if i'm going to use these are beautiful samples of of wakaya alpaca and as you can see you know the the crimping that's in there so the, this actually has a bit of memory all on all on its own but i would add about 20 percent wool to this to ensure that you have a good memory base um, and there again you this is a super soft uh, super fine wakaya alpaca so i would just put probably 20 percent romney is is what i would do because romney blends beautifully with other fibers and even if even if the, the stable lengths are different it, it really blends nicely and or, or cooper there again cordale um uh, yeah tar, cormo merino would also be wonderful but you wouldn't need any more than 20 percent you know 30 percent if if you if, if you feel it's not quite as fine or doesn't doesn't quite have the crimping and whatnot there's there's a lot of of, of different Alpa uh, wakai alpacas that won't be quite as fine and you might want to up you might want to go with a finer wool then a, you know the, the cvm or the merinos or the cormos to soften it also and then give it that nice spring that nice memory so yeah if you have any other questions on that you can sure message below i hope i covered it right <laughs> but yeah 20 30 percent is is all you need mm -hmm. I, and we had another question on another video, and it, somebody asked if we if we purchased Suffolk wool, and um, we don't. Yeah, we don't, we actually don't. I mean, we raise our own wool, so we we aren't yet burning through it fast enough to have to purchase outside wool. So as of yet, we do not. But but I mean, there's certainly Etsy or um, um, searching out you know, local fiber guilds yeah. in your area and whatnot. Or eBay. For, or for eBay, selling. yep, for, yeah. to, to sell it on your own. That that would be mm -hmm. a great thing to do. Um, uh, a good way to sell it then is make sure that it's a well-skirted fleece, that you've, you've taken off, you know, the edges and the armpits of the fleece and whatnot, and then it's it's fairly um, free of all that vegetation and, and dung pigs and, and so on and so forth. And, mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Well, now we're ready to... Draw for our prize. Oh, yes, 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 yes. And then we'll move on to showing you the claim. Okay, so we've got the names in here. Then I took the one off the top and I did. Okay, all right, there. All right, Sandy. So, uh, Sandy, if you would. Um, We're going to need your address. Yes. To ship that to you. So, if you go on to bearcreekfelding.com, and you can contact me through there and send me your address, and we will send you your prize, which is all of these lovely items. It's worth about $60, 65 Yeah. So it's kind of nice. Mm -hmm. So we'll be looking forward to hearing from you, and we will get that sent off. Yes. yes so yes, now yes, we're yes. ready to take a look at the plans. Yes. All right, now we're going to go over, and we have the plans here hanging on the walls. And I want to briefly show them to you. And then if you want to see them more in-depthly, you can go to the domeschoolhouse.com website and take a better look at them. And starting with the architect renderings here, and, and they're not going to look just like that, but give you a little bit of an idea. Here we have the front view. Of course, it's missing the flagpole in the middle, and there'll just be a circle drive out front here. And then we have the side view of where the event center is going to be. And there's a little, it's missing the little entryway, that vestibule that, that, that will be there. And of course, the color is going to be not that. Um, this is the, the, the side angle of, of the event center here. And then you can see the new addition. There's the new addition that's going on on the top floor, which is, does not exist right now. But that's where the B&B &B rooms will be. 
And then over here is the is the back corner and that this is the ramp going down into my mill. And then this is where the dining will be and it's just gonna be gorgeous with all those beautiful windows. And then there again, B and B rooms up on the up on the third floor there. And then this will be a, a, another entrance here, and this will be the, the ADA entrance. So there'll be the elevator will be through here, and parking is gonna be out in this area, so it'll be very, very easily accessed. All right, let's go over here to, let's start in the event center here. And that's the current, or the, the newest gym, yep. And here is the event center, which will be holding events of uh, anything from weddings to reunions, uh, whatever, uh, uh, little concerts, uh, events of, of whatever, whatever you could possibly think to imagine. We're gonna, oh, we're also gonna, <laughs> <laughs> to imagine. Um, we've also been contacted by um, a couple folks that are, are looking at, at holding it for um, some studio space, for exercise classes, dance classes of varying types. So we're kind of excited about that. And then here, the, we're, this will be where you enter into the the existing the, the existing school where you'll enter the main bathrooms down here, but we'll have one one bathroom that we're adding into the actual event center. There'll be a bar. There'll be steps going up and down here. That that's how the caterers will get access to the kitchen, which is in the in the second floor of the of the main school. And then from here, we'll go down to. Basement? The basement, yeah, right here. And then here would be where you're walking in from the event center. There'll be a new set of stairs put. And then right here is the men's and women's bathrooms, which are currently the boys and girls bathrooms, which will stay in the exact same spot. The fire suppression and mechanical room over here. And then back here, right here now is where the big old boiler move lives. But this will all be opened up into one big studio classroom space. We'll be doing dyeing. Um, quilting retreats, all sorts of fun stuff will be going on in there. And of course, here is the mill, yay! That's where all the, the milling will happen, the processing of the fiber. Um, here's that, that ramp going down into it, and then the elevator here. And then the, these are the original stairs going up onto the main floor, which is here. So you'll walk up the steps here, or you'll take the elevator end up here or here. Now this, will all be new. Right now, it ends about here. And this is what it, that we, can't, we can't keep. It's, it's, um, it's too deteriorated. So we're gonna take down these two walls, salvage the bricks, and, and then we just decided to add on a little bit to, to increase the mill space and to add on the dining space. And then, of course, the kitchen will be here, our offices, the, the separate entrance with the elevator, and we'll have storage here. Men's and women's restrooms will be added, and the retail space, and over here it says retail, but that's gonna be a sitting room, off, um, classroom space, where all the memorabilia will live from the school, the textbooks, the, some shelving units, the trophies in the trophy case, so on and so forth. So that's where all that will live. And then up on the, the top floor, the third floor, is where all the B and B rooms will be, and the one the one front uh, classroom will be one big honeymoon wonderful guest suite that'll be just amazing. And then the caretaker over here will have a caretaker apartment for the the caterer, and she'll be in charge of of the the guests and the breakfasts and all of that. And then of course the elevator, and then up the th the four steps will up to Teresa's art studio, which used to be the superintendent's office. And that's, and that's the tour of the Gnome Schoolhouse.